Hi, I'm Mike, and this is an awkward two-parter, because my camera cut out halfway into the first recording. Yeah, I just had to screw it. I'm going to keep going, because it's that or re-say everything. And you probably don't want to do that again. Well, actually, no, you probably wouldn't care, because you're seeing this for the first time, anyway. But yeah, I'm just going to jump right in. Nomad Mythmaker and E-Witness. Yeah, two-parter. Who'd have thought? E-Witness is the simple one. You know it. You see it all the time. It gets things back to your hand. It's pretty useful, especially when you have enchantments which have a tendency to be, you know, destroyed. So you get them back. Nomad Mythmaker, though, is a little better because it's a three drop, two, two, and in the next turn it's out, when it, or if it has haste for some reason, if you give it that. It's white and tap. Put target enchant creature card, which is now an aura, from your graveyard into play, enchanting a creature you control. This will get out of hand so incredibly fast that most of your opponents should kill this thing right away. If you're playing someone and they drop this, kill it. Kill it immediately. Because they will do something ungodly bad with it to you. Unless you're the one playing it, in which case, protect it. Because you will do something ungodly bad to your opponents. Yeah, you're good. All right, after that, just a couple of search cards. Fierce Empath for the bigger creatures in the deck, six cost or more. And Beast Tracker for anything with Hexproof, Reach, Trample, Death Touch. Yeah, both three drops, two one and a one one. Yeah, they just get things in your hand in case you don't have a creature. And then there's a few things like Sheldred. Okay, I'm being an ass by playing this. I know I'm being an ass. But it reanimates every turn, and it hurts your opponents a little bit. So if someone else is doing, let's say, maybe a Narset deck, unless they give it haste, it's going to be gone right away, which is a good counter for a Narset deck, because really, that if you let them go off, they, they just rip. But yeah, Narset, Sheldred, you know, fun stuff. Sovereigns of Lost Alara. Oh, this card. Let's get a little closer. This good? Oh, wow. Yeah. Actually, a good picture now. As you can tell, I adjusted my camera settings so it's not nearly as washed out. I'm hoping it looks better this time around. Sovereigns is a 4-drop. You know, blue-white, 4-colorless, exalted, so whenever a creature attacks alone, it gets plus 1, plus 1. And whenever a creature you control attacks alone, or triggers exalted, pretty much, you may search your library for an aura card that can enchant that creature. Put it into play, attach to that creature, then shuffle your library. Yeah! Okay, first off, my usual gripe. Sovereigns of Lost Alara, by its art, it's a giant cloud. It doesn't fly. What the hell? I mean, it's a non-flying cloud spirit. It doesn't fly. What the hell? I, I, ah! I mean, seriously, it wouldn't even break the card that much to give it fly. Okay, never mind, it actually would. But could they have altered the art? I mean, it looks awesome, and that is amazing! But I get the distinct impression that they actually had Flying Odd until they realized that that is probably a one-hit win condition. Or two-hit, depending on which artifacts you pull, but, or enchantments, but yeah! Ah, it, sorry, it's a personal gripe. I go off on this with everyone. And if you talk to anyone I know, they will pretty much say that I'm an ass, and I go off on this about er this to everyone. Yeah, the other two, though, I'm going to put out together. Zur and Bringer of the Black Dawn. Okay, if anyone knows a Zur deck, they know that they need to kill it right away. It's a 4-drop 1-4 one four that lets you search for an enchantment card with converted mana cost 3 or less and put it into play. There's a lot of good enchantments and ores in this deck that just get out with Zur. And to be fair, most of the Zur decks have him as the general. Zur in this case is actually just simply here for the search to help complete a combo. If I get him, great. If I put stuff on him, great. Really though, he's just here to do the same thing as Bringer. Which is search for cards. Bringer, though, has an interesting cost of a five alternate casting, one of each color, or the nine is normal. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may search your library by paying two life, and, you know, take a card, put it on top of your li- uh, I need to read this. If you do, search your library for a card, then shuffle your library, put that card on top. Essentially, you're choosing your next draw. It's a maze, so you don't have to pay the two life. That said, Two life for the card you need is always worth it. Because, you know, it's the card you need. You will probably win if you get one or two draws off this guy. Three is just kind of excessive. Four is you screwing around, which is actually completely va uh, varied and 
or valid in an EDH casual format, which personally I play all the time, so yeah. Have fun with that. Also, Bone Weaver, or Boon Weaver Giant. Seven drop, big guy, four four, a little expensive, but he has the ability to enter the battlefield, search your graveyard, hand, or library for an aura card, and put that onto the battlefield attached to him. So, uh, if you search your library, shuffle it. If for any reason any one of your really big scary auras is just not in your hand, or you can't cast it, or it's in the graveyard, or it's in the library, you will get it. He is the perfect base because he gives himself whatever he needs to start. If you have really good things in your hand to pile on after that, great! If there's a few in the graveyard, you're going to take one of them. If they're in your library, get it! After that, though, there's just three big fatties that I usually like to keep together. Sigarda, Bruna, and Earl. Now, Bruna and Sigarda are here for similar reasons. Mostly because they're big flyers, they're 5-5s, five well, actually Earl is a 5-5 five five too. And when they hit the field, they change the game. Sigarda, because hexproof flying and your opponent's can't, uh, spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause you to sacrifice permanence. Goodbye, Eldrazi. This one, it gets everything back from your library, and, uh, from your graveyard, and your hand. Earl, hexproof. Plus two, plus two for each aura attached. Green, red, white, which are some of the better auras in there. It's a win condition. After that, there's just a few more cards. Ooh, my battery's dying. I'll make this fast. Green Sun to search. Green Tether. Ores in graveyard into play. Plead for guidance. Get the three or, or two ores, specifically enchantments, but anything is good. Put them in your hand. Shuffle your library. Legacy weapon. Dick move, but, you know, exiling for five is good. Primal Surge. There's a few sorcery spells, but it's a win condition. It gets everything out really quickly and changes the game in a turn. All right, that's my deck. My battery's dying, so hey, if you like the video, leave a like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Later.